This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good, good morning, Rabbi Isai. I'm going to have Shabbos. We, uh, in the last year, we mentioned that the most famous Gemara, the most well known Gemara, is the Gemara of Mai Chanukah. So we have to learn it again. So the Gemara says, of course, Mai Chanukah. What is Chanukah? The Tanur Abanon, Bechafhe Bekislev, Yomid Chanukah, Tamanya Inon. From the 25th day of Kislev, 8 days of Chanukah, you don't eulogize, you don't fast. When the Ivanim enter the Heichal, they defiled all the Shemen. By the way, Rabbi Kiva Eger says, the Shemen. By the way, Rabbi Kiva Eger says, Ayin Barambam, Vashal Shachuvah's Bate Kahuna. And we uh, mentioned last year the question of Vashal Shachuvah's Bate Kahuna, and that is, how do we know the Ivanim defiled all the Shemen in the Heichal? Well, we saw them touch everyone. Well, presumably, we have to assume they defiled each one, misafik. But the question is, since the Heichal has a status of Rishus Harabim, Suffolk to remember Rishus Harabim, Tahar, fine. So you have to remember what we said last year. Fine. Oh, sh- they didn't have the seal. Well, seal, what do you need a seal for? Seal? You move it. Ukshagavra. Ukshagavra malchus beis chashmanai. When the Chashmanam prevailed, Vinatzcham Badkov Lemotzel Apachechot Shel Shemen, they found one jug of oil, Shay Munach Bechaisam Shel Kain Gadol. It was sealed with the signet of the Kain Gadol. Floy Haya Bay Ella Lahalik Yamechad, it only had enough oil to last for one day. Nasa Banes, a miracle happened, Vihidliku Imenosh Maniam, and it lasted for eight days. So I'm going to ask you a question. Not the question yet, but this is a very important question. The question we have to really think about. The oil was sealed with the seal of the Kain Gadol. Rabbi Said, does anybody know? Who lights the menorah? Kain Gadol. No. Any kain can light the menorah. Any kain can light it. Didn't have to, it could be any kain. It could be a Rappaport. It could be a Kohen. It could be cats. It could be Meza. Any kain. Any kain could. So why in the world would a Kain Gadol seal oil with his signet? For what? Why would he do such a thing? He was the Rav HaMachshir. So I mean, the Rav HaMachshir? Rav, 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 yeah, that's what he was. was. private oil. Do you think that the, the Kohen Gadol had time for Kashrus? No, in that right? sense, the same yeah. concept. Yeah. Right. Rebbe, was Rav Yashiv? Let me ask you. Well, Rav Yashiv has a Kashrus. You think any uh, Rav Chaim Kinezi has Kashrus? They don't have time for that. I guarantee you Kohen Gadol didn't have time. What's the Kohen Gadol doing sealing a flask of oil? The Torah says it's got to be a special oil, right? Yeah. So he, he decided he's going to do it and prepare it because you know, Mitzvah and Why would the Kohen Gadol? Every Kohen. It's Kashir any Kohen. They took turn. Well, any Kohen could have done it. You don't need a, first of all, you don't need the Kohen Gadol to, to uh, light it. And you also certainly don't need a Kohen Gadol to seal the oil. What did he seal it for? Yeah, but he's got priority, doesn't he? Yeah, he could do it whenever he wants. Right. But we'll, we'll, any Kohen, any correct. Kohen but why would he make a personal stash of olive oil? For what? It's not a personal stash. Well, what are you doing for, for? for? For that purpose, and it's... Why? Kidney. This is not something that he necessarily would do. No, Why would he... That was for salad dressing. He didn't want anyone else to use it. Oh, now, now we're talking. Okay. And then, of course, we come to perhaps the most famous question in all of Jewish literature. The Kasha of the Beis Yosef. Why do we throw away eight right? days and not seven days? If they found enough oil to last for one day, and it lasted for eight days, so how many days of miracles were there? Seven, seven days. So you should have Hanukkah for only seven. seven days, right? That's the Beis Yosef's Kasha. Look, take a look. This is the Beis Yosef, Simon Tuff, Resh Ayin. Why? Because we want to make sure we only we only celebrate the miracle and we don't celebrate what, what are you excess you? than the miracle. So celebrate oh. for 17 days. I mean, first, well, we're celebrating the days. Right, so, that, uh, the so what would be the matter with that? For the victory, the seven, the other seven. So you want to answer the question. Good, I'm telling you the question. Right? The question says, basically, I say, for equal medak, lama, kavu, shmoina, yamim. Why did they establish eight days? The kivan, the shaman, shavapach, hayubay, kadeh, halak, layla, achas. They had enough for one night. So there are only seven days of miracle. That's the Kasha of the Beis Yosef. So the first, uh, let's just speak out the three answers, the three famous answers of the Beis Yosef. Answer number one, they took the one day oil, they divided it into eight. So every day was a miracle because one eighth of oil, which should have lasted instead of 24 hours, we're told at three. The second answer, 
after they put the oil into the menorah, was the jug was still full. The jug was still full. So the nace was recognizable even on the first day. So on that, on the first, on the first answer, you could ask, why would they divide it into eight? In Saim Chanal Anes. On the second answer, you could ask, on the eighth night, the jug did not remain full. Right? Because they didn't need it for the ninth. Then we would have had nine, nine then, days and ten no, days no. if it kept going. No, if the, we, we only needed it for eight days. So, eight days for the so if we only need it for eight days, well, on the eighth night when they poured it into the five, it didn't stay full. So if it didn't stay full, so uh, why would we celebrate the eighth day? And the third answer is, they poured the whole thing into the nair, into the holder, and after the end of the first day, it remained full. And it burned the whole night. So they found it full. So there's a miracle even on the first night, because on the first night, it remained completely full. <coughs> yeah, but on the eighth night, it didn't remain completely full, so then there's no miracle on the eighth day. So these are the answers of the Beis Yosef. What I'm here to point out is that everybody gives credit to the Beis Yosef for this kasha, right? Everybody knows. This is the famous question of the Beis Yosef, right? If you ask anybody, who, right, what's the famous kasha on Hanukkah? The kasha of the Beis Yosef. So I want to point out that he wasn't the first to ask this question. Okay? He's not the first. The Meiri, the Meiri, right, the Beis Yosef lived 1488 to 1575 of the common era, right? Are you going to continue doing this? Giving dates? No, it's a Yeah. Yeah? What, you don't like that? It's very good. So the Beis Yosef lived 1488 to 1575. I'm only putting the secular dates, so that's, you know, that's what we're familiar with. But the Meiri, Meiri lived more than 200 years before the Beis Yosef. You can look on your sheet in number 3. He asked this question also. He asked, The first night, there was no miracle. So he says, We make a bracha for finding the oil or for the redemption. And it's brought down and there's a sefer that brings 100 answers to the Beis Yosef's kasha. He brings down... That even though everyone credits the Beis Yosef, the Meiri was the first person to ask this question. I can't believe the Tanakh and Amariah, they wouldn't have asked this question. No, the we don't, it's not in the Gemara. The so it's so bro- first the... the so the Sefer Ner Lamea, the Sefer Ner Lamea brings down that the Meiri asked this question already. So I would just point out that the Meiri wasn't the first person to ask this oh, question okay, either. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now okay. Going. The, the Sefer Ho'eshkal by Rabbi Avram Bar Yitzchak, one of the Rishonim, who lived 11, 10. 11, 10, more than 100 years before the Meiri, he already asked this question. Okay, that's just a side point. I want to tell you one of the simplest answers to the question of the Beis Yosef, and that is the Girsa of the Shiltis. The Shiltis was uh, written by Rabbi Yachoy Goin. And I'll tell you something amazing about the Shiltis. You know, if you look in the Rambam in his Hakdama, the Rambam li- lists the chain of Messiah going from Moshe Rabbeinu until the Amiram. But if you look in the Meiri's introduction to Turkey Avais, he traces it back all the way to his time. And he puts in the line of Messiah, Rabbi Achai Goin. And he writes that Rabbi Achai Goin wrote something called She'iltis. She'iltis is, until the time of Rabbi Achai Goin, people wrote halachas based on the order of the day. The Rambam, he groups together different categories of halacha. You have the Shulchan Aruch, based on the Seder Hayyim. The Shiltis was the first person to write halachas on the Parshish HaShavua. These are the halachas we learn on Bereshis, the halachas from Nayach, and so forth. Was he before the Sefer Ashkol? Yeah, yeah. He doesn't ask the question. But the, the, I thought the, the, the appellation Gaon... Gaon is before the Rishonim. Before yeah, before the Rishon. The only period I thought was later on. No, no, no. 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 The Gaonim before the So, Rabbi Achoy, listen to what the Mimi writes. Rabbi Achoy was, you know, was an innovator. For him, in his times, it was considered very modern to write halachas on the Parshias. It was a very novel idea. And he was an innovator. And why did he make this innovation? The Mimi says, Rabbi Achoy Gaon had a son, Shalal Haya Loimed Klal. And he had to come up with some kind of means of education. How is he going to educate his kid? The regular system wasn't working. So instead of writing halachas based on the word of the day, he made it more interesting. He made the halachas on the parashiyah Okay, so you see an important lesson from here. 
that what is the correct way to educate your kid? Whatever works. To feed that guy, right? What works? Yeah. But, but it wasn't done. We don't do it this way. Well, sometimes you have to be a little creative to what works for the kid. Yeah? We see that from Rabbi Chai Goyim. In any event... What, what example is that giving? How's that? No, because oh, until his hour, times, hour. nobody wrote halachas based on the parashiyos. That was like a novel idea. But in any event, Rabbi Chai Goyim has a very interesting girsa of our Gemara. The Gemara said that Rabbi Chai Goyim's girsa is the Tanya, look at number six. Listen to this. They didn't have enough oil to last even one for day. one day. So we say, according to the Shultis, the question doesn't begin. Yeah. Oh, they had enough oil for one day. No, they didn't. They didn't. So that, that, that would be a simple answer to the question. But it makes things worse. Why would a Kayin Gadol... But the Gemara doesn't say that. No, so that was his gears. That was his gears on the Gemara, apparently. Oh, so he doesn't have that gears. He has a different gears on the Gemara. Just, just think about that for a moment. Because this Kayin Gadol did something completely unnecessary. He took oil, he put a seal on it. So at least do me a favor, put in enough oil for one day. You go through the trouble of sealing it, and it's my, it's it's... A kasha, a kasha, according to all the deus, every shita. So at least do me a favor, put enough oil to last for one day. You're giving the kashus on it, it's not even good for one day. What was the kind of God doing? Yeah. What was he doing? Well, for what purpose? Well, because because maybe um, the chashmanayim, I mean the uh, yavanim, destroyed everything else, and he was what, just the, filling the, up his, his things and doing the job. And this is this. Oh, and um, we have one. Right. It's got only got. He wasn't doing it right. haphazard. If he went through the trouble of putting his seal on it, and it made sure it was kosher lemonira, which is you need very special oil, the first drop of the oil. All right, but he only had so, he only had and he her. sealed it. That means apparently he wants it to be used. So yeah. he wants it to be used. It's, it can't be used. Not enough oil. What do you mean a better answer? Because now if you don't have enough even for one day and you use it, now the first day is also a miracle. Yeah, exactly. No, right, right. We answered the base Yosef's question. The only thing is the Kayin Gadol was not, uh, not operating on all cylinders according to this. Well, what's he doing? So, and I have a very, Fine. I have very nice. You're answering the base of Kasha? I have another 99 answers to the base of Kasha. But now, well, what was the, first of all, why did the Kayin Gadol seal it? And number two, why would he put in not enough for one night? I have a radical approach. Yeah. Which after pending some of the Shira, maybe we go that way. But this seal was not the Kohen Gadol seal. This was a malach that a Kurdish Baruch Hu sent <laughs> and put this oil in this pot yeah. and did it specifically so we should have the nace and put the seal of the Kohen Gadol so we should be sure to use this so even a, though we didn't need it. So it's it a forgery. It's a forged malach. Huh? So what? I don't know. It didn't matter. I'm not, on the, I'm not on the level to say such big chidushim. Oh, it all the time. <laughs> okay. So, I've always said, listen to this. Listen to this. The record here. There's a question. Um, there's a sefer from Masechta Shabbos called Shabbos Shomi. That, and so the sefer Shabbos Shomi comments on the Avchaf Alpha and Who is that? We'll see. He says, Amnam. Hagufa Kasha. What was the oil for? What did he do this for? Because he forced, in other words, Kohanim Gedolim did not seal oil for the Menara. So why did this Kohen Gadol seal oil for the Menara? Oh, because Baruch HaKodesh, he saw the Jews would need oil when the Ivanim come in. So he should have made eight jugs. V'loi Sako Adai to Kohai. But if he didn't have this foresight, why would he seal even one? In other words, why would a Kohen Gadol seal oil? 
if he had an inkling what was about to happen, and he knew, knew Baruch HaKadosh, we would need eight days, let him make eight. Otherwise, he shouldn't have made any. How, how do we know so that, says, how do we know that, um, that it wasn't done as a... As for a, what? Why would a Kohen Gadol... That's like you going to the store, and you say, give me a peach snapple. Oh, we have peach snapple sealed with the seal of the Kohen Gadol. Why would a Kohen Gadol seal peach snapple? For what? It's got to be certified to be... Z- yeah, it has to be zan. kosher. That's why you have the OK. And the OK certifies that it's kosher. But you don't need Rebbe Yashif to certify your, your peach snapple that it's kosher. So the same way you don't need for your peach, you don't need for the Menorah. Menorah is kosher by any kind. Why would a kind God seal a, a jug of oil? So he quotes from Ra, okay, Rebbe Rafal Yeshaya Azulai. Oh, I wonder the title of Right? Rebbe Rafal Yeshaya Azulai. He says an amazing thing. There's only one carbon that a kain gadol brings every day. The minchas chavitin. He brings half in the morning, half in the evening. Does anybody know how much oil the minchas chavitin needs? Three lug. Three lug. That could a regular kain bring? No, only the kain gadol. Anybody know how many neiros are in the menaira? Seven. Seven. How much oil does each nair need? Three lug. Half a lug. Plus three and a, to- a half lug. Three and a half lug. This jug that was sealed by Kohen Gadol was not sealed by Kohen Gadol for the Menaira. You don't need the oil of a Kohen Gadol for the Menaira. You know what you do need the oil of a Kohen Gadol for? The Menchas Chavitin. That's why he sealed it. But the problem was, what? There wasn't enough for one nair. So why did he do it? He didn't do it for the Menorah. He did it for his carbon, for the Minchas Chavite. Minchas Chavite needs three look. Look at the Gemara Menachas. It's a different, it's a different shaman, though. Oh, it's a different shaman. But the Kohen Gadol wanted to be Mahader to light, to bring his carbon with what? With Shemin Zayezach. But why wasn't there, why was there three and a half, not three? No. In the jug of the Kohen Gadol, there were three look. For the Menorah. No, for the Menorah you need three and a half. So? For the Chavitin you need three. So there wasn't enough for the Menorah. So there wasn't enough even for one night. We asked, why would the Kohen Gadol seal? The answer is different for himself. Why would he do not enough for one night? Because he wasn't doing it for the Menorah. He was doing it for his carbon. For his carbon it's enough. So it says, Rabbi Fel Yishai Azulai, Amar Mar, Yadua ki b'chol yom v'yom choiv ha yomuta ha Kohen Gadol lahak rev mincha machtsisa babayk machtsis v'arav. Kohen Gadol had to bring a minchas chavitin half in the morning, half in the evening. Be nikras chavitin kedisa parak kol amenachos. Boys, thank you. Upasku aram parak beis hilchas meisar kabanos halacha dalad. For hayamevi ima shloishas lugin shemen. It required three lug of oil kediyav parak atches davnon alf amenav upasku amli aram bereish parak yigim with hilchas meisar kabanos. Emer mayata. What are we gonna say? Hakoyin agadol hayamechin pachin mishemen toiv lasos chavitin. The kind God that would prepare oil for the minchas chavite. Vahaya chayseim kulam v'chayseimai. The kain God will steal it with his seal, so that the regular kaihanim don't use this oil for their purposes. Kedei shlo yisarvu b'shem anacher. How much was each jug of the kain God? Three lugin. V'chalecha mehem shiroi hayel gimel lugin. Och shenichnesu yivanim lehechal timo kashmanim. Now we understand the gears of the Shultis. Otherwise, why would a Kohen Gadol seal Dafka a little bit less than you need? Answers, he's not doing it for them now, he's doing it for himself. Well, we didn't answer, but it still doesn't address the issue where they don't need this special oil, right? Because... Oh no! No, no we're, not, we're not. That was. We're not dealing with that question this year. We were dealing with the question: Why would a kain gadol seal oil? Because the menorah could be lit in by any kain. The answer is he wasn't sealing it for the menorah. He was sealing it for his personal carbon that was brought from his his property. And now we understand the girsa of, of the shultis. Like the Beis Yosef brings down. Ah, Yan Kishir Hapach. How big was each jug? Lo Hayak Kiyim Gimel Lugin Ka'amar. The the jug of the Kain Gadol was three lug. And how much do you need for the Menorah? Ulatzarech Hamenorah Hayatzarech Gimel Lugin. 
Umechza. You needed what? Three and a half. Chatsi log l'chol ner, v'ner, k'yadua. So the Miri and the Beis Yosef and the Sefer Eshkol Oh, they had a different gear after yeah, they hold for. I mean, it's a legitimate reason why you. No, they're dealing with their their gifts on the Gemara that they had enough for one night. But we were trying to explain what would the explanation be of the Shiltis that they didn't have enough even for one night. Why would you have a sealed jug, not even enough for one night? The Chosh will have the B'cholay Ner Echam and Amenayra Shu Ner Maravi. What did they have in mind? Listen to what they were planning. How much oil do they have? Three lug. In three lug, how many nights could they light? Less than one. Less than one. They needed three and a half for one. They needed three and a half, right. So what they had in mind is, They would light every night one ner. They could have done six nights. And as they're performing the miracle... That would make more more. As they're performing the miracle, what happened? They pour the oil, which was not even enough for one night, and all of a sudden, what? That half a lug, that half a lug, even a little bit of oil filled up the half a lug of the menorah. They were able to fill up the whole menorah, and it only took up what? It took up less even than a half a lug. It took up less even than... If you take a look, and look at number eight, this is the answer the Chida brings down in the Sefer Yosef Oymetz. Simon Lamed Beis, in the name of the Pnei Aryeh. The Harab Pnei Aryeh, Shal Sitchubas Nesh Nun Resh Vav, Simon Mem, Ahmad Bechakira, Demara Kach, Hakoin Gadol, Lachtem Pach Echa Bresham and Haroi Liyam Echa. Why would the Koin Gadol seal oil that's only enough for one day? Why would you need a Koin Gadol? For Hevi Mishem Goin Echad, Liashiv Chakira Zub, Ba'irach, Vatarv Dvarav. The sum, then in a nutshell, he says like this: the asachin letzarche chavitim. He did it for the minchas chavitim. Even though Rabbi said for the for the minchas chavitim, you don't need shemen zayusach. You could use a lower grade oil. You could use uh, you could use regular oil. You don't need you don't need the first drop. How shemen zach kasis the kasha menayra, and that jug was three lug. And the miracle happened that it, they, even though they didn't even have enough for one night, it was able to last for all eight days. So it's brought down, you know, the Prichadash asks, on the eighth night, you didn't need the jug to fill up again. Because once they poured into Menorah, the Menorah is full, you don't need the jug to fill up. So according to this answer, you could say they did. They needed the jug to fill up so that the next day, the Kain Gadol could bring the Minchas Chavitin. Because this is not the jug of the, for the menorah. This is a jug for the Minchas Chavit. So Rabbi Yisai, over the years you see many different answers to the Beis Yosef's Kasha. I believe this is a new answer that maybe we're not familiar with. That, first of all, we ask, why would a Kayin Gadol seal oil? Second of all, we ask, what's Pshat in the Girsa, the Shultas, that there wasn't even enough for one night? The answer is, according to the Chida, according to the Shabbat Shalmi, I don't remember who wrote it, and, and according to Rabbi Rafael Yishai Azulai, this was the oil for the Minchas Chavitin, which required three lug, which required three lug. Did they bring the Chavitin the first day? Probably not. No, well, everything stopped in the base of the right. right? Everything stopped. The Talmud stopped. But, but, this was the oil, the Chavitin, they didn't even have enough for the first night, because for the first night you need three and a half and not three, and a miracle happened, and it lasted for eight days. And that's what we're doing here today. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.